Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by My name is Doug Davison. Welcome to Fantasy Grounds Tutorials. Today I'm going to show you the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition rule set, or just Dungeons and Dragons if you prefer, and uh, how to enter an NPC and how you can use that and have it automatically recognize the attacks and some of the special abilities that that uh, NPC or monster might have. So the key is that you'll, you'll go into your NPCs or personality screen here, and then you'll use this uh, list editing function at the bottom right click on that and then you're gonna you're gonna click on add item this will open up a blank NPC uh, sheet that you can kinda type in today we're gonna use a guard drake as an example and I'm gonna look at this from the Horde of the Dragon Queen uh, module so I'm gonna shift this over here and I'm gonna show you guys uh, what that would look like If I can successfully move it around here let's see there we go Okay, so um, you just want to have you know both options available. You'll pull it from your from your actual book, uh, but just drag this over. You're gonna just key in everything exactly the same way. So here it's a medium creature, it's a dragon, and it's unaligned. And you'll see that um, I'm moving very quickly through the fields here. You can click on any of these and then just type a value into that box, or uh, if you want to do like what I'm doing now, you just tab to go to the next one, and then shift tab takes you back up. So I'm just going to tab through this very quickly. Uh, the armor class is 14. I'm going to specify that that comes from natural armor. The hit points are 52, and that is 78 plus 21. Now some of these values will be just purely informational for now, but there's a there's a chance that down the road we might. Uh, enable some additional functionality based off of that and the best way to support having your creatures recognize that additional functionality right out of the box will be to enter it in exactly as it is in the book because that's what we'll be kind of coding towards. Um, the other thing is when I entered in all of the attributes here you'll see that it automatically calculates what the what the modifier is to that specific thing. That will also apply directly to your um, ability checks and to the saving throws based off of those. So um, just make sure that you get those in the same way. Uh, there's no additional saving throws. If there's no um, if there's no headings here that match the field on the NPC sheet, then just ignore that, and you'll see that as I uh, so in this case saving throws there was nothing there. But if I look at this other creature, there are some saving throws. So I'm going to go back to here, look at my skills, put in perception. You'll see that it starts to enter in, and then you can just hit. Uh, space and it'll jump to the end and you can just put in the bonus, put in a comma, and then you can type in the next skill. All of the basic skills should be recognized here. They have no uh, vulnerabilities, but under resistances you'll see that it has lightning, if I spell lightning right, lightning, resistance, uh, no immunities, no conditions, senses, I'm going to just key in exactly as it has, 60 foot dark vision and passive perception of a 12 and then here it understands draconic, but can't speak it. Challenge rating is a two for oops, 450 experience points. Okay, so now we're going to get into the more interesting stuff. So here you'll see you have traits, actions, reactions, and then legendary actions. In this particular case, this is a fairly basic uh, challenge rating two creature, so it only has some actions. It doesn't have any other reactions. So again, I'll use this list editing function for that and I'll hit add. I'm just going to type in multi attack uh, and you'll see where the period is and where it's bolded that's the heading and then from there you just want to skip down to the next section so the drake attacks twice once with its bite and once with its tail and then I'm going to add two more here we'll add bite and then that's a melee weapon attack and I'm going to use the colon so it recognizes it uh, when I try to uh, parse this out later and it's got a reach of five feet one target period 
and then hit colon and then put the, the default hit value, the, the average, so to speak, uh, 1 to 8 plus 3, and then make sure that you put in the type of damage. So in this case, it's piercing damage. I'll demonstrate why that's important here in just a second. Finally, I have a tail attack, um, and that is another melee weapon. Attack, colon, plus 5 to hit, reach of 5 feet, one target, and it's going to be a hit for 6, 1d6 plus 3, bludgeoning damage. Okay, Okay, so now that's, that's fully typed in, we don't need to do anything else, and you'll see as I hover over here, it recognizes the plus 5 to hit, it recognizes the attack string, the damage string as well. Uh, so now I'm gonna. Sh I don't need to see the. Uh, I don't need to see that anymore. So I can just kind of shift this over, back to here, and I'm gonna show you uh, this little box. This little circle here is the token. So if you want to assign a token to it, you can just use um, like a letter token. Grab like a medium token, and then maybe D for Drake. Uh, let me move it off to the side here. D for Drake, for instance, and then that will allow you to represent that specific creature on, on any battle maps that you have. If you happen to have a, a little bit nicer token, in this case I actually do have something perfect, which is from the Monster Manual. So I can drag that over, and you'll see now it'll use this icon from that point forward. When you're done, just click the lock button, and now you'll see you've got a fully complete NPC sheet. And you can actually pull that up, and you can... Um, you know, do as attack strings, you can roll as damage strings, or her, I don't know if it's a girl uh, guard drake or a, or a male guard drake, and then here you can uh, roll the skill checks as well. Any of the top things here, you'll see you've got a C and an S. C stands for a check, that's a strength check. Uh, you only want to click it once, um, sorry, not double click that one. And then S will be the saving throw for that same thing. So you'll see it'll tell you in the chat window whether it's a check or, or if it's a save. Alright, so now that I've got that in, I'm going to show you how that looks in the combat tracker. I've got two player characters in here. Let me go ahead and heal them up a little bit, uh, get rid of any wounds that they have, and then I'm going to just drag the guard drake in. And you'll see that it instantly recognizes it has a resistance to lightning. And then here you'll see if I show the attributes, it'll have the attributes recognized properly can hide the attributes and show the attack strings. It has links to these which you can click and see the full details. Um, but it also recognizes that it's a melee which, which is indicated by the M. It has attack uh, bonuses listed in there and the damage bonuses listed in there. The other thing is here you got your defenses, has its armor class and um, and that's basically under, under effect shows its resistances. So I'm going to just show you um, what it looks like when this creature is going to do its attacks. So now that I've got that, I can just drag and drop it to the player, and it says that you hit or you missed, and I could drag the 1d8 plus 3 piercing. It'll total it up for you and apply 7 piercing damage. In this case, um, it didn't really care what type of damage it was here, but if I was to, let's say for instance, Sharp Eye had some special effect, maybe a magical ability, I'll hit the plus here, and I'll add a new effect, and I'll call it resist, and let's call it... Um, piercing. Okay, so maybe they got resist to piercing for some reason. Alright, so now uh, you'll see that that's recognized. If I drag the same thing over, the first five points of damage should be removed. So here it did nine points of damage total, but you see it automatically subtracted the five because it was partially resisted. By the same token, if I was to have an immunity, if it's immune, then um, when I try the same sort of thing, then it should basically ignore that entire uh, damage, damage zero. So again, that's, that's very important. If you ever need the full details, you just click here. Now you've got an NPC you can use in all of your encounters and story entries. Thanks a lot. This is Doug Davison with Fantasy Grounds. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, look for more on our YouTube channel. Just a reminder that everything you see here on Gamers on Games is made possible by patrons like you. Why not check out our Patreon page? It would really help us out.